Good morning students. This is Mrs. Sadi Joseph, your science teacher. Welcome back to the online teaching for the session 2020-21. We will proceed with the same chapter that is chapter 12, Friction. The previous video I had explained what is static friction and what is sliding friction. Static friction acts on objects when they are resting on a surface. And sliding friction is a friction that acts on objects when they are sliding over a surface. We had also seen the advantages and disadvantages of friction. Today, in this module, we will see what is rolling friction, what is fluid friction, and what are the methods of increasing and reducing friction. You must have seen attaches and other pieces of luggage fitted with rollers. Why is it so? Let us find out. We will do one activity that is activity number four in your textbook. Take a few pencils which are cylindrical in shape and place them parallel to each other on a table. Over the pencils, you place a thick book. Now push the book. What do you observe? You can observe that the pencils also rolling as the book moves. Do you feel it easier to move the book? Yes, you will feel it easier to move the book in this way than to slide it. What is the reason? I'll explain. When one body rolls over the surface of another body, the resistance to its motion is called the rolling friction. What is rolling friction? Rolling friction is the friction that acts on objects when they are rolling over a surface. It is much weaker than sliding friction or static friction. So you have to apply, apply less force to overcome this rolling friction. It is always easier to roll than to slide a body over another. This is the reason why it is convenient to pull the leakages fitted with rollers. This is why most forms of ground transportation use wheels including bicycles, cars, roller skates, scooters, etc. Ball bearings are another use of rolling friction. Common examples are the use of ball bearings between hubs and the axles of ceiling fans and bicycles. Why ball bearings are using in machines and fans etc? Because it reduces friction. Ball bearings look like this. See the figure.
Now let us see another type of friction that is fluid friction. What is a fluid? Do you know? A fluid is a substance that can flow and take the shape of its container. For example, liquids and gases. They can flow and they take the shape of its container. So they are known as fluids. Even though air is very light and thin, it exerts frictional force on objects moving through it. Similarly, water and other liquids exert force of friction when objects move through them. So we can say that fluids exert force of friction on objects in motion through them. It is known as fluids friction. So what is fluid friction? It is the friction that acts on objects that are moving through a fluid. Fluid friction is a friction that acts on objects that are moving through a fluid. The frictional force on an object in a fluid depends on its speed with respect to the fluid. That means the faster or larger a moving object is, the greater is the fluid friction. The faster or larger a moving object, the greater is the fluid friction. If the object fast, moves faster, then Fluid friction will be greater in that case. So it is obvious that when objects move through fluids, they have to overcome friction acting on them. While doing this, there is a loss of energy. Therefore, Therefore, effects are made to minimize friction. So, the objects are given some special shapes. From where the scientists get hints for these special shapes. It is from the nature. You can see that the birds which moves in air and the fishes which moves in water have some special shapes. Their bodies have evolved to shapes which would make them not to lose much energy in overcoming friction. Most of the time, birds and fishes, they have to move about in fluids all the time. So, their bodies evolved to shapes which would make them not to lose much energy in overcoming friction. Aeroplanes and the vehicles which move in water have some special shapes because it helps to reduce the fluid friction. They are designed in such a way to reduce fluid friction. Our last topic in this chapter is increasing and reducing friction.
in real life there are circumstances where we have to increase the friction and minimize the friction we have seen in the previous video that friction is a friend and sometimes it is a foe in some cases we have to increase the friction and in some other cases we have to reduce the friction friction can be increased by increasing the roughness of the surface in contact for example trading of shoes and tires is done to increase the friction you know why the sole of your shoes is grooved it is done to provide the shoes better grip on the floor brakes are provided to bicycles and automobiles it is also to increase the friction only so many other examples also you can see from your day to day life in some other situations however friction is undesirable and we would want to minimize it friction can be minimized by using lubricants like oil and grease and by using ball bearings between machine parts do you know what is a lubricant lubricant is a substance that is introduced between two surfaces in contact to reduce friction is called a lubricant what is a lubricant a substance that is introduced between two surfaces in contact to reduce friction is called a lubricant why do you sprinkle fine powder on the carrom board the reason behind to sprinkle fine powder on the carrom board is also to reduce friction bicycle and a motor mechanic uses grease between the moving parts of this machines to reduce friction only fluid friction can be minimized by giving suitable shapes to the objects moving in the fluids here we comes to the end of this chapter read the chapter nicely understand it your midterm exam is approaching prepare for the exam complete your notes learn the question answers thank you bye bye and take care